We want to say greetings to everyone and thank you all so much for joining us today. My name is Brother Hulk Bolden and as usual, uh, we're glad to bring you the things that the Lord have laid on our hearts to share with you all. Amen. So we have been talking about believing God's prophets and the importance of us believing God's prophets. And um, we've been looking over the life of a man named Moses who was clearly vindicated as a prophet and we think it's very important that we look at his life to get an understanding of uh, of why we should believe God's prophets and the calling of those prophets and what all goes into that. Amen. So, if you have your Bibles, let's go to the let's go to the uh, third chapter of the book of Exodus. The third chapter of the book of Exodus. And we're going to start reading. Uh, let me see. We'll start reading at verse 7. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and Jebusites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? So you see what his mindset was. He felt like he was not worthy to do that. And that's the way most prophets are. That's the reason why most of them are going to be humble. You see that? Because most prophets don't don't um, walk around as if they're worthy of that calling on their life. You see that? Verse 12, and he said, certainly I will be with thee. You see that? Now that's God's assurance. Now, if God is, if God that's the assurance of every prophet that the Lord called. And so if God is with them, then you do well to take heed to whatever it is the Lord instruct them to say, if God is with them. It's impossible to reject a prophet of God without rejecting God himself. You can't separate the two because prophets, in reality, all they are, they are mouthpiece of God. They're just speaking what God has given them to say. And so it's impossible to reject what, has, what a prophet says. And I'm talking about real prophets now. It's impossible to reject what a real prophet says without rejecting God himself. I've seen people do that over the years. And if you look at their life now, they live like they're not living for the Lord. I'll put it that way. It is impossible to continue in the things of God and reject what God is saying. And a lot of times what people do is they try to find fault with the prophets of the Lord and they feel like that some kind of way will excuse them from following what the prophets say and that's that's you know unfortunately unfortunately for them uh, it is impossible to continue to live for the Lord and reject who God have sent to you you see that it's impossible to do that verse 12 says and he said certainly I will be with thee and this shall be a token unto thee. In other words, a sign that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. 
Verse 13, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And so he's wanting to know, who am I, who's, who's, What is your name? Who am I coming in the name of? Why? Because there are, Moses understood that the Egyptians had a lot of gods. They had several gods. And so it wasn't going to be enough to say, God sent me. That's why sometimes when you hear us preach, we, we say the name Jehovah just to make it clear. You see that? Just to make that clear. And so Moses asked the same thing. Well, who, who am I going to say that sent me? What does that let us know? That it's important that a prophet knows who they're representing before they're sent. And God makes sure that they know him. And unfortunately what happens is the prophets of God, before they are released to speak a word to people, or before they are released to go start that type of ministry, they get to know God one-on-one. -on -one. And so after that, they're going to people who think they know God and may not. And so this part here <clears throat> represents Moses getting to know God for himself. This part represents Moses coming into the knowledge of who God really is. And with that, he, he will know what God expects, the, the rules that God has. He'll know his holiness. And unfortunately today, many prophets know that holiness, and when they go to the people and preach it, the people reject it because they think they know God, but they don't. They have conjured up a God in their mind who they choose to serve, but it's not Jehovah because Jehovah is the same across the board. He's constantly the same. He don't change. You see that? And so when that prophet goes to speak to the people who call themselves children of God, they, they may reject it because they don't know that God. They know one that they've been taught about. They know what their pastor has said. You know. But when, a, a, when you grow up hearing a preacher or a pastor say, you can't live without sin, that's another God. That's received of another spirit. And because of that, when God sends a prophet to say different, the people reject it because they've gotten to know another God. Now in, their, in the front of their minds, they really believe, hey, I'm really serving God. It's talking about Jehovah. But they reject his word, which is clearly written here. They reject it, and so that shows that, that they don't really know God. That's where the root of rejection comes in at. That's, where, that's why people reject God, because they don't really know him. They think that they know him. You have people still walking around today believing that the miracles are for the past, that miracles have ceased with the apostles, and that because of that, apostles have ceased, that there are no such thing as apostles and prophets today. So, of course, my question is, why are you going to church? If there's no such thing as apostles and prophets, who, who else are you going to hear the word of God from? I mean the real word of God. I'm not talking about somebody going to school and studying it and coming up with their own interpretation. So what is the point of even going to church? You see how the devil just, you start backsliding when you disbelieve God's word. There's not one scripture that back up that apostles and prophets have ceased, that they've gone somewhere. And God, you know, that God have cut them off some kind of way. They're still prophets and apostles today. And when a person began to disbelieve God's word for whatever reason, then they, they begin to cut themselves off from God. You see, and we have to really know what spirit is behind that. That's, that's why we stay hitting on that. You know, we have to know what spirit is behind that. The Bible makes it clear that these two offices, apostles and prophets, that the mysteries of God's word are revealed to those two offices. And so that, that spirit that don't want to receive those deep things of God to, to be able to follow those things, that's that spirit that rejected those two offices exist. And it's those two offices that, that present doctrine and that preach it to the core. That gives you the mind of God concerning his word and what God expects. And so people reject those two offices because they don't really want to follow the Lord to begin with. 
If you get away from God's word, then you've gotten away from God, and you can't separate the two. You see that? So here Moses is asking, well, who am I going to say sent me? Why? Because people in church, for the most part, they're serving all kinds of gods, even if they're not aware of it. They're serving several gods. Number one being themselves. And so Moses is making it clear, I don't want to come in my own name. I need a name to say who I'm, who have sent me. In other words, I need to know your identity to separate you from the rest of the mess that's going on. And you see, and that's the way it is. If you think about it, people in church, the one reason why they, they look just like the world is because them and the world are serving the same God. That's the reason why they look like the world. Because they serve in the same God. They serve in the God of this world. You see that? And so when a prophet is sent to speak God's word faithfully, he knows who has sent him, and you won't be able to back him off of it. You won't be able to back him off of it. Verse 14, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Everybody see that? And so there, he's telling them who sent him. I am. Tell them I am has sent you. And then look what he says. The the Lord of God of your fathers. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. So isn't it a shame that the children of Israel are crying out to God? Let's look at this carefully. The children of Israel are crying out to God, a God that they don't know. And so the way God has to identify himself is by saying, I am the God of your fathers. In other words, get away from all of that Egyptian mess that you have picked up. I'm the, he didn't tell him, I'm your God. He said, I'm the God of your fathers. In other words, the, way, the, the ways that you have cast off because you think it's old-fashioned, I'm that God. The one that you neglected to try to stay relevant with the world, I'm him. He says, I'm the God of your fathers. In other words, the God that was served in the Bible days to us. I'm that God. So everything outside of God's word that you, you know, that you have picked up, or everything that you have picked up in the world and tried to bring it into your Christian walk, I'm not that God. I'm the God that calls for holiness. I'm the one that calls for separation. In other words... I'm the God of your fathers. The way that they served, that's who, that's who I am. Not trying to stay relevant with your generation. Preaching the same gospel to your generation. You know, I, I've heard several pastors over the years say, well, we have to, you know, we have to do something to win the children over. And so they invite all of this other junk into the church that has nothing to do with God. And God is saying, I'm not the God that in introduced this mess. I'm the, the same gospel that it took to get you saved, it's going to take to get your children saved. And if they reject it, you don't dumb it down and water it down to make it taste good to them. They're going to either receive the full truth or they're rejected. And you can't deem them saved when you've watered it down. Because then when they hear the truth about it, they can't stand it. That's the reason why we got so many grown old folks in church that can't stand to hear the word now. Because somebody dumbed it down for them years ago. And made them think they were saved. And then when they hear the word, they can't stand it. Why? Because they've gotten used to drinking water. You see, it's kind of like when you drink water all the time, and, and stuff and let go of sweets something that you taste something that's sweet and it's too sweet for you to drink and you have to water it down and that's the way God's word is it has been watered down by the masses of preachers today to make it bearable to people 
And it's bearable to you if you really have a heart for God and you really want to serve him. I'm living proof God's word works. If you can follow this word. And God's prophets don't dumb it down. They know who have sent them. And they know what God expects. Now, you'd be silly to walk around thinking, oh, that's too much. I, who can keep up with that? Or who can, who, you know who can? Those who God have given the power to do it. And God gives that power, gives you power to follow his word when you have a pure heart to follow it. Now, as long as you're making excuses for it, you'll never have the power to do it because God won't give it to you. That's the reason why there's a line drawn and people are saying, you know, that you can't live perfect. No, you can't because you haven't received God's word about it yet. But if you receive God's word and what he says, you'll be able to live according to God's word. Listen, the devil gives you the power to live for him. You don't say, well, nobody can, you know, you know, nobody can sin. Why are you not saying that? It's because the devil have given you power to sin. You come here with that power. And so why not receive God's power and say, you know what? I was this way, but now that God is living on the inside of me, I have the power to overcome sin. And again, that's what... Egypt represented was sin. God sends prophets to deliver people from sin, to turn their hearts towards the God of their fathers. In other words, the way that God have been, to let people know God is the same. He expects the same. And he does not change. Amen. We want to say thank you all for joining us today. We pray that something have been said that have been a blessing to you. And we pray that you will continue to listen into this broadcast. Have a blessed day.